So we are at the time to get going here. So let's jump right in. My name is Bill Higby. I'm with Product Marketing here at ZipWhip. And with me today, I have two special guests. We'll start with... I'm Brandon Taft. I'm uh, an account executive here at ZipWhip working with the um, staffing recruiting uh, clients we have here at the company. And I'm Dave Levine. I'm a sales engineer here at ZipWhip helping out on the technical side of things uh, to support our sales team. Right. And this is very special for me because I have two guests. Normally, it's just me here talking you know, a technical expert and somebody who interfaces with customers or prospects like yourselves out there, answering questions day in and day out so we know um, the types of concerns that you might be having here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about integrations with Bullhorn for texting today. And there's there's several choices on the marketplace of which ZipUp is one of those. This is not intended to be a ZipUp commercial, but I do have to give our obligatory statement to start. Uh, ZipUp is a company that helps businesses communicate with customers the way that they prefer, and that is, of course, texting. We offer easy-to-do software integrations and an enterprise-grade API that helps improve customer responsiveness and satisfaction. All right, let's jump into the good stuff here. For our agenda today, uh, we got three different sections. The first one we're going to talk about is the power of texting integrations. We're going to walk through four key advantages. And then we're also going to have a section where we're going to talk about the criteria that all of you should be using when you're evaluating texting providers. You know, if you're evaluating texting, of course, we're at the table, you're trying to discuss with us, find out the correct information, and then you're looking at other competitors of ours. What are those types of things you should be really looking at? And then finally, we're gonna finish it up with a QA. and a um, Since I have two experts here with me, please try to come up with the most difficult questions possible, because I really wanna stump them. Let's make them sweat. All right, let's jump into the first advantage of integration, which is message sync. And to start off, talk about message sync. I'm going to start with David. Oh, thanks, Bill. Um, message synchronization is just pretty straightforward. I mean, uh, you, ZipWhip offers a suite of software tools, and uh, you can text message from any of those. But um, the, I think the critical part is that the messages that you send and receive using any of our tools will synchronize back into Bullhorn. So all those communications between candidates and recruiters can be referenced later on for future access. All right. And Brandon, what are some top reasons that staffing and recruiting companies reach out to you about texting? I would say the top three are probably um, just increasing overall candidate engagements, um, kind of driving more operational efficiencies kind of in their day to day. And then uh, another one is definitely employees using their personal cell phones to text candidates because you know, a lot of people I talk to, you know, the recruiters are going to be texting regardless. Yeah, personal cell phones. That's uh, that's always a fun one. Um, it, I say fun in a, well, obviously there's lots of problems with using your personal cell phone to reach out to uh, potential candidates. Um, doing that, obviously, there's, there's no record. Um, so uh, there's no way for recruiters when they, uh, are dealing with prospective candidates to look at those messages later on down the line. Uh, if a recruiter leaves the company, they take their cell phone with them. All that history is gone. Uh, reaching out to the same person in the future, you know, and not knowing what's been said before, maintaining that audit trail and, and having a data retention policy that uh, allows for proper oversight. I mean, that message synchronization within an ATS, that's what that's what that message synchronization is all about, is making sure to fill those gaps. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. Uh, for this audience, we're specifically talking about Bullhorn, so how does this relate to Bullhorn? Yeah, I guess I should be a little more specific. So we can see in our screenshot there that uh, the message synchronization occurs in the notes section with the contacts. So any of the conversational two-way messages, that all appears as notes, um, and the, the conversation thread is, is visible uh, throughout the, the ATS on those contact records. And then I guess if I can also jump in a little bit, um, kind of from a recruiter standpoint and how it impacts their day, basically just means that you know, when they're looking at that candidate's record, they're gonna be able to see all of that. There's not gonna be any you know, toggling back and forth. It's gonna be much more easily integrated into, into their workflows because it's gonna be all there in the ATS, easily accessible and you know, very, very optically transparent. You know, something that I hear kind of all the time from, from my clients um, kind of in the industry is, you know, if it didn't happen in the ATS, then it didn't actually happen. So this is kind of assuring you guys that, you know, no, it did, this interaction did indeed happen in the ATS. Um, so that's kind of something that I hear pretty frequently. 
Exactly. And, you know, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but we do have a full suite of tools, mobile application, the web application, and uh, the desktop application. And messages sent using any of these applications actually will sync back into Bullhorn. So regardless of which outbound communication tool of ours that you're using, all of those messages would appear back into Bullhorn. Sweet. Right in the notes section. Awesome. Anything else to add there? No? Sweet. Let's move on to the second advantage of integration. That is contact synchronization. And I started with David last time. Let's go to Brandon. All right. Sweet deal. Yeah, this one's this one's pretty straightforward. Um, basically, what a contact synchronization means is that you know, it's going to be very easy for your recruiters to manage all of their contacts. Obviously, you know, there's a million and a half things that are running through uh, a recruiter's mind kind of in their daily tasks. And I'll work with clients that have you know, candidate pools ranging from, you know, 100 to, you know, over 100,000 contacts. So if you're a recruiter and you're managing a, a large book of, of candidates, obviously kind of doing double, double entry um, can be a little time consuming and tedious. We want to kind of really make this something that's super seamless. Um, so with a contract, a contact sync, basically it's just going to let the two systems talk back and forth. Um, so when you do need to reach out to, you know, lots and lots of candidates you don't have to double enter lots and lots of candidates 100,000 candidates it sounds like a must have that's a significant benefit of an integration uh do you have anything to add to this oh i don't think so brandon nailed it i think ah brandon you must have done much better than david did the first time <laughs> all right let's move on to the third advantage of integration which is group messaging uh david let's let you kick this one off Group messaging, um, why would that be important? Well, I, the use case is pretty clear, and I think most of you uh, out there probably understand what we're talking about. Typically, you're going to be reaching out to more than one person at a time. So you're going to be looking through your book of business, finding out who matches what particular requisition you're looking at. And we need to get a message to all of those folks all at the same time. So uh, group messaging is, is a very important feature, and we have that integration enabled within Bullhorn so that you can easily message more than one person at any one time. Just click and choose those folks you wish to send that message to, and you'll be able to group message all of them at the same time. All right. So when I think about group messaging, I think about sending an email. I send it out to 100 people, and then everybody responds and everybody sees my message. Is that the way this works? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you're using the, the email analogy, um, really, it's more like a blind carbon copy. So really, it, it, to the candidates, it, all, it appears as though it's a one-to-one -one conversation. Okay. Yeah. I knew that, but I just had to throw that <laughs> in there. Um, Brandon, you got anything to add on this one? Yeah, I, I got a couple of things. Again, David, it's not because um, you're not Everybody's doing a great job. Me it's, today. it's more because I'm opinionated. <laughs> um, but just, and I'll cover this a little bit more later, but I think it's worth mentioning. Yeah. You know, imagine a kind of a scenario you're doing like a Friday rush order. You need to reach out to, you know, 500 candidates. So when you're doing a group message, you want to make sure, you know, kind of what the delivery mechanism for those messages is. Um, so, for example, if you're reaching out with to 500 people or 1,000 people, is it going to be delayed, sequenced, or are they going to all send immediately and be received immediately? Is there going to be any sort of restrictions time-wise? So throttling, perhaps, maybe only a certain number of messages per time period? Exactly. I see. Um, so, so when you're evaluating a, a provider, you know, kind of group messaging is going to be something that's very important, and you just want to kind of know what's powering that. Because mm -hmm. um, imagine you're a candidate and you're the 500th person, and all of a sudden, you know, this message comes in, you know, three, four hours after the rec was posted, and then by the time you get a chance to respond to it, it is already filled. Not a great experience for the candidate, not a great experience for the recruiter or or the client for that matter. Right. Yeah, I could I could imagine. Um, anything to add to this one? No, no, no. All right, all right. Let's move on to the fourth advantage of integration, which is staying in Bullhorn. And Brandon, let's start with you on this one. Yeah, and, and we already kind of touched on this a little bit, um, kind of back with the, the synchronization. Um, but again, with the texting tool, um, you want to make sure that it's something that's really easily integrated into your recruiter's workflow, you know, for uh, adoption purposes and just use purposes. Um, so basically, um, when implementing a tool, you just want to make sure that it's going to be seamlessly accessible within the, the ATS. Because again, if it didn't happen, the ATS didn't happen. So we want to make sure that it's adopted to the point where the recruiters feel comfortable actually um, living within their current workflow and not defaulting back to that cell phone. Um, so, so switching back and forth between different applications. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not ideal. 
Um, so it's just one of the things where we'll want to make sure the recruiter can stay nice and focused in Bullhorn and not need to be toggling back and forth every single time they want to send text. That makes sense. Uh, got anything to add on top of what he's saying? Well, yeah, probably a good time to talk about the few other times that recruiters do actually use other tools, uh, LinkedIn, okay. Indeed, you know, there's a lot of other search tools out there. And it, you, you will often find it useful to send text messages directly. So if I happen to be on Indeed or LinkedIn and I'm looking at a candidate's profile, I might want to reach out to them right now. Um, we have a wonderful little browser extension that will actually text enable any mobile telephone number it finds on any website. That's including Bullhorn, actually. Um, so it allows those, uh, those interactions to occur uh, right away uh, without having to switch back into Bullhorn in this, in this particular case. And the lovely thing is the messages that you send using that method also syn synchronize back to Bullhorn. Yeah. So it all does stay in the ETS. Um, having a little bit of difficult time understanding exactly how this works. So I go to any web browser, I go to LinkedIn. How do I send a text from LinkedIn? Oh, yeah. So there's a little green, uh, sorry, green. <laughs> Orange, orange is our color, <laughs> a little orange icon that'll appear next to any telephone number okay. on any website that you're looking at. So basically we screen scrape any web page for telephone numbers, make sure they're mobile telephone numbers. And then we show a little icon just next to it. So you can right. click on that icon and initiate a text message conversation. Right. Sweet, and of course it syncs back to the ATS just like you said. Sweet, love it. All right, now let's move on to the next section. Uh, which I think is is extremely valuable for again for all of you out there. If you're going to evaluate a texting provider, you know us or another another company that's on the bullhorn marketplace, uh, what are the certain questions you should be asking? We got it broken into four different sections here: deliverability, ROI, compliance, and security, and price. Uh, let's start with deliverability. And Brandon, let's start with you on this one. Okay. Yeah. And again, I already hit on it a little bit, kind of in the, the group messaging uh, portion. But essentially, the deliverability just means. Um, kind of what's powering those text messages, how fast they're being sent, how reliably are they being sent, and how securely are they being sent. So going back to, you know, the example we're using of like a, a 500 or a requisition where you need to reach out to 500 candidates, you know, when you're sending this text message, is it going to be sent out immediately? Is it going to be sent out over a certain period of time with like a, a queuing or a staggering of sorts? And kind of what is that process for which the, the message you're getting from ZipWeb or your texting solution to the candidate's cell phones. Um, so when you're looking at a, um, a, a provider, you kind of want to dig in a little bit deeper at kind of what's powering their software. Um, a a ZipIt, for example, and I think Dave, you'll get into this a little bit more thoroughly, you know, we have direct carrier connectivity. So when you send a message, it's going to go basically from ZipWhip to the carrier to the candidate. So there's really no stops. Um, whereas if they're going through a third party, you don't know kind of that route. If they're gonna go across the street, they might be going all the way around the block to get across the street. Right, yeah, so there could be, be many. Yeah, you better be careful because he's trying to steal your technical job. <laughs> what, <laughs> I love what, what do you have to for a technical standpoint, anything? Well, sure, I mean, I can expound on that a little bit. Direct network connectivity is what it's all about. So yeah. um, the, the long, and, long and short story is we built our own network from the ground up. We interface directly with all the carriers in North America and then some. Uh, and because of that, we have trusted connections to everyone and we can get that message there uh, more reliably and more quickly than most of our competitors can. Yeah, yeah. Bottom line, dig into it, find out exactly uh, how the deliverability works with the company that you are evaluating. All right, let's move on to return on investment. And this is what everybody really wants, right? If you purchase a solution, you want your people to use it, get the return that you expect. You want those expectations to be met. The difficult part is a lot of different expectations. So we got it writ, broken down to four different sections. Number one are features, then onboarding, usage, and support. Um, Brandon, this is really your bread and butter. So let's start with you on here talking about features. Yeah, no, I mean, features is really just coming down to the, the core point of, you know, what do your recruiters have access to um, in their texting solution? So something, you know, simple like, like a character count, for example. Um, do they have... You know, the limitation of you know, like the old school BlackBerry, where they can only send like 160 characters out per text message, or is it going to be something that's a little more business centric? Can they send like five, six, uh, 700 character messages out that can you know encompass an entire job um, description? Um, have you know a lot richer communication? Do you have space to put in like an opt out for compliance or like a, a signature for branding? 
Um, so much information. Yeah. I, I work, I've been here for a while. I have a lot <laughs> going on up in here. Uh, hopefully good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you just want to kind of dig into what the full feature set is, um, kind of, can they do group messaging? Can they do, you know, automation? Kind of what are you getting access to with a texting provider? Right. right. So it's got to be a bunch of features that people like to use in staffing recruiting and message you met mentioned group messaging and uh, character count. Are there any others you can think of that are really important? Yeah, I would say probably the the, the most important is the ones we have. Obviously, group messaging is kind of, you know, our bread and butter yeah. um, just because all, within a recruiter's daily job, you know, they're reaching out to a lot of people. So that's going to really be the core thing that drives efficiency. Um, but, you know, other things are going to be like auto replies for out of office, you know, kind of giving the recruiter the ability to leave work at work and kind of, you know, automate some workflows or even the ability to like schedule messages or sequence out um, things to go in the future um, for things like, you know, check-ins or first day on the job reminders to mitigate no-shows, you know, different touch points that recruiters going to have to be making anyway. Mm, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, when you were talking about character count, you said rich communication. And I see we've already had one question come across that talks about RCS. So we'll have to make sure and get to that one and see if you can. Yep, talk about it. Yeah, I know you didn't mean RCS, but no, you said rich communication. Sorry. That's a good segue to questions. All right, let's move on to onboarding. Uh, what do you guys say about onboarding? Yeah, and, and this is one that I, I, I like as onboarding is kind of where I get to interface with my clients a little bit more um, in depth. Um, basically, this just means kind of what infrastructure is in place for your texting provider to not only sell you a texting solution, but also help onboard and implement a texting solution. Um, so do they have resources for training? Um, do they have resources for implementation? Is there going to be any sort of documentation or, you know, videos? Is someone going to be doing a live training session with you guys? What is in place to ensure that not only are they going to sell you a texting solution, but make sure it's successfully implemented and adopted by your recruiters? Right. You have those expectations. It certainly needs to And, and then also, like, yeah. go, this kind of ties back into, you know, Gateway as well. Like, how long does it take for them to actually go in and activate a phone number? When you okay. want to get going, do you have to wait an hour, a day, a week, a month? Kind of what, what timeline are you looking at to actually get things rolled out? Yeah, that's a terrific point, terrific point. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is usage. Yeah, and then again, this, I guess to kind of uh, hit on this a little bit with onboarding as well. Um, but end of the day, we want to make sure that when we're implementing a texting solution, it's something that is actually going to be adopted by the recruiters because you're paying for something you want to make sure kind of from an ROI perspective that you're actually seeing the, the return aspect of the ROI. Mm -hmm. um, so when you've kind of onboarded um, the, the solution, kind of what's going to go into you know, the continued support, continued engagement? How are we going to ensure and monitor and make sure that our recruiters are actually going to be using the solution? And this really ties back into kind of what infrastructure do they have from a continued success standpoint? Do they have a dedicated team for success? Are you fed to the wolves once you're trained and set up? Um, kind of what are we going to be looking at strategy-wise um, past the initial point of sale? Yeah, I, I know one thing I hear a lot about in some of the emails I've read is about training, you know, live training versus recorded trainings, those types of things as well. Is that a common question you get? Um, yeah, I would say I get it pretty frequently, just, but that's part of, you know, a normal normal cycle like yeah because people want to know kind of what is going to be going into the actual like implementation portion of right. texting yeah yeah so make sure and dig into that obviously and the last one under roi is support what do you got to say about support yeah and again this kind of ties back into everything you know if you have issues kind of how easily are you going to be able to reach out to to your company to your account executive for questions for troubleshooting um, again it's going to be something where you're going to be calling in and left hanging on the phone, or you're going to be able to easily access like a dedicated support team, a dedicated account executive or a success manager. Is it 24 seven? Is it only like nine to five? Do they have people constantly monitoring their network and their software? So when things break, um, how fast can they respond to things? So I just want to dig in more deeply into kind of what lies underneath. What is kind of that backstop? It's propping, you know, the entire team up. Right. Um, I know I can do Q&A at the end. I did have the question come across, will we get the slides in a recording in this because there's so much information? The answer is yes. And I'll touch on that again later. Um, David, you're probably going crazy here because you haven't had much to say for a while. So let's talk about compliance and security. 
Compliance and security, yeah. So um, lots going on there. Um, first thing to mention probably is we're we here at Zipwork are one of the few providers that actually have a SOC 2 Type 1 certification. Um, and that places a lot of trust in us with, uh, with our carrier network. So it helps us build out that network even further. Um, in addition, we support opt-out at the network layer. So all of these communications that you're sending out to folks, if they don't wanna see that communication anymore, simply on them to press the stop key or press uh, type stop and text stop back in. Uh, and then no more communications will, will be fed out to those folks. And that'll help ensure your TCPA compliance uh, for your organization. Yeah, yeah, bottom line, you know, you're evaluating a communication platform, you have to make sure and dig into the security and compliance act, um, capabilities that they have. Yeah, yeah. you know, in addition to that, uh, I should probably mention we're fully encrypted both in transit and at rest. So all those communications uh, are guaranteed private. All right. And then in uh, more meetings, he can explain the more technical details. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. No discussion would ever be complete when you're evaluating providers without talking about price. Uh, Brandon, what should people be looking at for price? Well, uh, yeah, this one, this one, this one is, is the fun one. Um, yeah. So when you're looking for price, you just want to kind of dig into a couple key key things, um, and you want to make sure that you're really doing like an apples to apples comparison, so you know, you know, side by side what's going to go into any texting provider you're looking at. Um, some things you might be looking for is again, you know, just what is the software price gonna be for, you know, access to the software for your users itself, you know, so that initial price cost. But then you wanna look to see if things are included or if there's additional things on top of that. Are they gonna charge for the integration? Is there gonna be a charge for any form of implementation? Um, is your provider gonna provide you like an, an unlimited service or is it gonna be like a, a per unit per text service? Um, so is it gonna be something where you have to monitor usage and make sure that you're not going over a, a block or is everything gonna be included whether you send you know 500 messages or 5,000 messages or 50,000 messages? Um, are they gonna be charging for training? Are they gonna be charging for support? So you know, the, these, ancillary things that you know come kind of on the back end when you're looking at at stuff what is the added cost going to be to have access to you know a support network training network you know all those additional stuff that exists outside of just the, the software itself um so best bet is just when you're looking through stuff be thorough don't leave anything to chance make sure you're getting you know the full list itemized breakdown of what you're going to be getting yourself into yeah, yeah, apples to apples comparison side by side. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Love it. All right. I see quite a few questions have been rolling in here. We're about to jump into the question and answer period. Um, let me just start looking here and figure out the first one that we're going to ask. I did mention the RCS one coming. I'm going to save that one for later, though, because that's a really fun one. Uh, let's start with this one. What about marketing automation campaigns? Can we send thousands of messages to prospects at one time? And this sounds kind of technical. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take that. So when it comes to automation, you know, ZipWhip itself has several methods of automation on its own. Uh, so the platform can support scheduled messages um, where you can send out a message and schedule a date and time that it should go out. Obviously we have keywords and autoresponders. Uh, Brandon touched on some of that earlier. Um, Aside from that, if you want to get more complex, you might want to consider evaluating workflow automation tools. So um, we're fortunate that we partnered with a company called Zapier and they integrate with over 2000 other providers. Um, and lots of things are, are possible using a Zapier integration. Uh, you can actually accomplish appointment reminders um, in automated fashion. Um, and there's just loads of things are possible when you open that door. Um, sort of a, you dream it, you do it, um, uh, sort of thing is possible with, with Zapier. Right, and then to go back to the question, with Zapier you can send out thousands of messages to prospects at one time? Sure. With Zapier integration? That's possible, yeah. Zip it, Bullhorn integration, then with Zapier integration. And yeah. if, I, if I can jump in, you know, just kind of day-to-day -day stuff that's already pre-built. You know, we do have some, some decent automation already in place, you know, time-triggered logic for, you know, auto replies or, you know, keyword workflows, you know, for marketing campaigns or any sort of like ad campaigns you might be running to yeah. you know, drive in new candidates. And then, you know, you've mentioned it briefly, but, you know, certainly kind of given the, the power of our API, 
you know, if you can, if you dream it, you can do it. Um, so with the API, the, uh, the possibilities are really endless with our API. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And adding in like a Zapier partner integration allows you to integrate with other folks. I didn't even mention like indeed or uh, drips.com, right. Facebook leads, uh, all those things then become possible and you can build marketing flows and automation flows from those tools as well. Sweet. We're doing time check. We still have four minutes. Let's, uh, keep cruising because a bunch of questions are coming in. Um, I use dial pad. Well, I have to switch over to landlines and I have to admit, I don't know what they're talking okay. about. Okay. I, I, I can take this one because I've um, worked with some, some VoIP um, uh, porting okay. recently. Um, so dial pad is, is kind of going to be a, a voice over IP solution. This kind of again goes back to, you know, the network and what's powering those text messages. So Dave mentioned earlier, kind of, we have direct carrier connectivity and basically what that means is that you know the the infrastructure that's powering the entire industry and we plug, plug directly into that so a dial pad or like a, a ring central or a, or a vonage they typically go through you know a, a gateway provider and i believe with dial pad it's specifically uh, bandwidth.com um, so bandwidth is what kind of gives them access to make their calls and send their text messages um, so since we have you know, relationships at a carrier level i think bandwidth is actually um, probably one of our, our strong relations. I think the last port I did with them took uh, four minutes. Um, so wow. like super fast. Okay. But we like to say, you know, we can text enable any toll free landline or voice over IP phone number in North America. Um, and we we stick to our guns on that one. So if, you, you're, if you're using a dial pad or uh, a ring central, you know, issues at all, um, we'll be able to make it happen. Awesome. Sweet. I love it. I can say I got smarter today. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Um, all right, this one says, I know it was mentioned briefly, but can you give a little more detail on the scheduling capabilities? Want to say anything about scheduled messages or anything? Yeah, no, so so with scheduled messages, um, essentially what this means is we're kind of given the ability to set a message to go out in the future. Um, so for, you know, mundane tasks or, or reminders, rather than, you know, hitting send and having it deliver immediately, I mean, you can go in and prescribe, you know, a date and time and kind of set up, you know, these sequences of messages to go out mm -hmm. um, in, in the future. So the idea would be perhaps you you have a, a phone screen with a candidate. Yeah. And you, you've set a date and time for that. You just want to send a quick reminder. Um, but you'd like to have that go out at a certain date time just prior to that. Exactly. So you can do reminders or, um, you know, if after a uh, a, a interview you want to kind of do some continued follow-up make sure they don't fall out of the pipeline you can do like a, a day after a week after a month after kind of whatever the whole cadences yeah, yeah, yeah. works best with your your workflow and basically it's just like a, a time efficiency tool um, so that way yeah. you know when your recruiters have some downtime or you know have tasks they can go in and schedule things so they don't need to remember to do it moment of which you know everyone gets overwhelmed sometimes so you don't want to be the person that forgets to send out a reminder and it gets ghosted. Yeah, I know I know some people like the fact that we could also use our templates with our scheduled messages as well to make it simpler in your workflow. Yeah, exactly. um, we only have like one minute left. I promise to talk about RCS. It says, when will RCS be available and will I still be able to use ZipWeb? Uh, sure, I'll take that. So RCS is uh, rich messaging for uh, for text messaging. It's not really something that's been generally available. You know, it's it's been traditionally between either two Android phones or two iOS devices. Um, but the plans right now are to expand RCS all the way through up, up through ZipWip's infrastructure as soon as it's available. So we're really excited about that, the ability to send rich content, uh, videos and, and attachments uh, and all of that through uh, the ZipWip platform. So yes, on the roadmap for sure. Comes yeah. Through. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. It's, it's, it's the future. I well, see we have like another half dozen questions or so. Unfortunately, we don't have time to get to all of those. We are going to respond to all questions uh, by email. Um, we're also going to send out the deck and a video recording of the uh, uh, presentation we had here today. Um, do you guys have anything to say before I close this off? No, I think we, we hit on it. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. I, I hope you found it extremely valuable and good luck with your uh, future texting experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.